Um, hello, thank you for uh, having me here. What I would like to present is also uh, uh, addresses the problem Ben has mentioned that we uh, lack uh, any evidence really on what's happening in this domain and how, uh, what kind of data we can uh, design our policies on. Uh, and uh, one of the main uh, issues here is what are the alternatives to piracy and what are the alternatives to copyright enforcement. Uh, so the project that we are uh, working on, and I'm part of a larger team here, uh, at the University of Amsterdam Information Law Institute. Uh, it tries, tries to address uh, ways uh, with which we can uh, legalize uh, currently infringing uh, digital practices uh, in a way that also uh, answers the, uh, the quest of authors and rights holders uh, on how they will be monetized. Uh, this is, of course, not a new ID. Uh, it has many names. This beast has been floating around uh, for the last uh, decade or uh, so. It has different names in different countries, culture flat rate, uh, creative contribution, sharing license, uh, you name it. But it's very much like a manticore. Uh, everyone speaks about it, but no one really has seen one in, uh, in reality. And the reason for that is that the uh, approaches and the designs that have been uh, floating around suffer from some serious problems. First of all, they are all designed by lawyers, uh, which is uh, hardly a good sign if, uh, if, <laughs> if you want to design something usable. Uh, also, they, um, uh, all of these proposals that are floating around lack two very important uh, basic knowledge on the proposal, and that is whether would anyone support it, uh, anyone including rights holders as well as users, uh, and what would be the economic impacts of introdu if introducing uh, such a scheme. Uh, it always fascinates me that I'm a Hungarian uh, living now in Amsterdam, so when we in 89 uh, joined uh, the free world, uh, I was promised that the customer will always be right, and the copyright system doesn't seem to follow this rule, so this is the only domain probably where the customer cannot be uh, ever right. Uh, uh, but we, we try to understand what would be the combination, what would be the solution that would enjoy uh, 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 a serious uh, public support. Uh, also, they are designed from a top-down perspective. So a legal scholar or legal expert uh, comes up with an ID. He can justify or he can, she can justify why uh, he or she thinks that would be the best uh, uh, to implement. Uh, but that may or may not be uh, what reality uh, uh, is compatible. Um, they are mostly focused on legal issues, um, and uh, again, there is uh, hardly any empirical evidence on the data. The few uh, that are there uh, ask very simple questions, like would you support some kind of a system that would legalize file sharing? And you know, you have answers like this, yes, very. Well, I'll take this uh, and base a policy on that. Uh, more sophisticated studies start, uh, try to ask the price, like how much would you be willing to pay per month for a sharing license, and then you get nice data like that, but you don't really know what is the product actually that people are willing to pay for. Uh, so these are not very helpful, uh, and uh, these def deficiencies uh, are what we are, uh, what we are looking forward to uh, correct. And this is a multi-year project, which has several stages. The first stage is a legal assessment of all the possibilities out there. So we, can, we have to come up with something that is imaginable uh, in the legal domain, that is compatible with the, all the logged in uh, legal frameworks uh, that we have to live with. Uh, so we have a legal part of this research that maps the domain, maps the already existing proposals, and uh, tries to understand uh, what are these uh, imaginable solutions uh, out there. Uh, and we try to do that from many different pers perspectives, like uh, uh, from the user perspective, from the rights holders perspective, from the, uh, uh, from the rights perspective, from the uh, payment system perspective, and so on, and so on, and so on. And we try to see what are the legal mechanisms with which or through which you can implement such a system. Can we leave that uh, to the market so they will negotiate the right solution? Or do we have to uh, argue for a more aggressive government intervention where we say, okay guys, you had 10 years to come up with a solution, you couldn't, now we're gonna legislate something because uh, it seems that you uh, cannot solve this problem uh, alone. 
So this is the legal analysis, but the real question is, you know, how you uh, create a solution that uh, enjoys the public support. And you, you, you don't have to be a, a brain surgeon to understand that if something doesn't enjoy public support in the internet, it will fail. Whether that's a policy like copyright or whether that's a service, uh, if, it, if it doesn't uh, meet with the, uh, with the norms and expectations and the imaginations of the individuals who are sitting in front of the computer, you will not be successful. So the question is, how do you test these ideas? And uh, the way uh, we come up was that we don't know what's in the head of the individuals. We are not really interested because uh, we shared this idea of the previous presentation that it's mostly uh, chaos uh, and uh, it's very difficult to uh, uh, to deal with that uh, we, and we also don't want them to understand copyright because I'm, I'm not a copyright lawyer myself, I deal with copyright, I've dealt with copyright for 10 years but I don't understand it either. So I don't expect others uh, to understand all these issues. We treat these as, as black boxes uh, and what we feed this black box is a number of options. So we try to uh, uh, pack these different possibilities into a product which has several different attributes that are very easy to understand. It's like, is it, is it mandatory that you will pay a monthly fee for some kind of a sharing license or is it voluntary? If it's voluntary, does it come with the same level of enforcement that you now uh, enjoy or will it come with some severe uh, uh, enforcement measures to catch those who still download but do not uh, pay for it? Uh, does it come with a fixed fee everyone will pay? So whatever I use, I will f uh, pay the, ten, the same 10 euros as you are? Or will the uh, uh, fee change with how much I consume? Does it come with uh, downloading only rights? Or people would like to have the right to share? Or people would like to have the right to modify those content and share as well? Uh, what kind of subject matter are we talking about? That did Spotify and Deezer solve this problem of piracy in the music domain? Uh, so we have to concentrate on audiovisual content or books. Or these are propositions that are not valued by the market. So people wouldn't want to pay for the inclusion of ebooks, for example, into such a product. Uh, what kind of catalogue they are expecting? One of the main reasons uh, cited for piracy is that they, uh, they, they are downloading stuff that they couldn't find through legal sources. Would people be willing to tolerate something that reflects the current market, which is you either find it in a legal service or you're not? Uh, should we force pe uh, rights holders to enter into a system or can we leave it in a voluntary model where rights holders can decide whether they want to uh, uh, take part of an alternative compensation system uh, or not? Uh, how do we uh, distribute the revenues collected? Is it a factor when people decide whether they want to join or not to a system? Uh, we think that it's a value if we, think, if we say that individual artists, human beings, will receive at least half of the revenues rather than the corporations. How does monitoring and privacy issues come to the picture? Would people pay less if you told, tell them that they're going to be monitored? What is the value, what is the price of privacy in this context? Uh, because, of course, at the end of the day, what we are interested in, how much would people uh, be willing to pay for a certain combination of this of these attributes. So how we do, uh, uh, do that, how do, do we ask this question? Uh, through a survey, a representative survey in the Netherlands on 5,000 households uh, using a three-part survey. First, we map the media consumption habits like what you've seen in the uh, uh, World Internet project, uh, mapping online, offline, legal and illegal uh, consumption patterns. Uh, and then we, uh, we borrow a method, a survey method from marketing research uh, that is called Conjoin, in which you ask people to choose between two combinations, two product descriptions, in which one you can only download music for 10 euros per month uh, without monitoring, or you have the other alternatives where you can share, modify uh, uh, things, uh, music, films and books as well, 
but with temporal restrictions and monitoring uh, for double the price. And uh, we present them a number of alternatives like this. And these, through these trade-offs, what we'll be able to see is what is the rank uh, of these different possible alternatives, these several thousand uh, possible product combinations. Uh, we'll not only be able to say what is the most valuable, most uh, popular option within this, but we'll be able to pinpoint certain uh, uh, consumer groups like pirates or like offline people or like uh, people who have already have Spotify and uh, uh, accounts and buy films on iTunes. Uh, so we can measure substitution effects as well because it's politically very difficult to sell something to rights holders if we say that Ooh, we have a wonderful solution, people would buy it, buy into it, but it will destroy uh, already established revenue channels for you. Uh, so this is the this is the uh, uh, the survey that we're gonna run next month, hopefully, and the one point will be the uh, social uh, analysis, and the other outcome will be the economic analysis. So we're gonna do a welfare analysis, which is the basis uh, for any policy uh, uh, design. We'll be able to tell which interest group, which state, state stakeholder group in society, rights holders. Uh, state responsible for the enforcement uh, consumers uh, are better or worse off due to the implementation of different policies uh, based on that. The results will be available uh, from early next year onwards. Um, the, we try to open source everything uh, that we uh, do, so the questionnaire is up for grabs if you want to do something similar uh, in the UK, in, the, in Poland, uh, we're working with Hungary to uh, establish something, then just contact me, I'm happy to share everything. Uh, we're going to share the data as well. Um, and um, if you have questions, find me after, the, after this session. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.